a group of people organized so-called people's theater and actually influenced by it, like so a lot. We need producing nurses and doctors. Um, but for, for us, our origin stories are in public health. And I know uh, Rosa Cole was doing a research on history of public health. And I think that Manadol has really tied in. Also, IPSR, uh, which started back in 1971 to deal with issues around fertility. So I think about over half of us might be demographers, and the other half are others, like economists or political scientists, and so we are also a research institute, um, very based in the social sciences, and many researchers concerned with issues around the health migration. I'd like to uh, tell you about my research, Sandy, that's about the fun things about the temporary migration. This is the first time that we work uh, migration across the continent, the temporary Asia and Europe. The, there are 12 countries in Asia and Europe uh, involved in this project. And we, we got the support from the EU. Uh, we did our uh, output from the research is the book. We put two books together. And this is the, some kind of the, the We have the same discussion about not just only the, the temporary migration, the labor migration, student, high school uh, migration, and also the lifestyle uh, migration that involved in this project. To say that um, probably the theme of diversity and globalization uh, is that it, this is core business. Uh, in the Institute for Culture and Society. Uh, both Shanti and I have been closely uh, involved with uh, of the kinds of issues uh, that are on the table in this context. Uh, digital life is another thing with, with which I've been closely associated. I'll say more about that uh, when I come to say something about my own work. Uh, but I want the uh, Berlin Institute for Migration at Humboldt University, uh, where we work very closely with uh, uh, a colleague called Manuela uh, Bojacicek, uh, and they are working on with us on digitalization of labor and migration. So I share this site with Joyce, who suggested I show it uh, this morning, uh, because these are some of the directions that um, the collaborative research that uh, uh, you know the group I'm associated with. Some of the directions in which things are heading. Um, so the um, around issues like uh, crowd work and platform economies, urban logistics, uh, use of digital technologies and migration. Uh, so I'm also uh, working with um, uh, looking at civil society alliances, how different groups are mobilizing um, and creating partnerships among different groups. So we're looking at how each of these groups and other forms of civil society through political activism. It's using storytelling as to understand uh, narrative as a way to understand the uh, communities. Uh, I've been involved in a storytelling project with indigenous youth and women. And so interest in this using creative arts, theater, um, and also digital stories. And came up with a book as well, uh, which I which the author which is uh, attributed to the indigenous women. So we're very interested in looking at education and Maybe this would be a good opportunity also to be able to sort of link these different projects together, maybe document it using different types of interfaces. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, so my own research was uh, interested in looking at this form of alliance making into effectively looking for a long time that the uh, health issues of, of migrants have, has been a big issue in the eyes of the um, British already. And, and today, of course, you have a lot of uh, uh, health issues among the migrants as well. So these are how my work intersects with uh, migration. But uh, um, my, I have other projects which is not um, academic. Uh, I was involved in a migration project three three or four years back uh, when we, we were invited. It's 
two other friends and, and, and me, we were, we were invited by an NGO to work on um, Cambodian migrants in Malaysia. Because uh, back then, until today, Cambodian workers uh, is the most, one of the most understudied migrant groups in Malaysia. Unlike uh, Indonesian workers, which has been uh, very well researched, but not Cambodian workers. So um, that's another project that I, I got a chance to look at, uh, you know, migration. Um, I think primarily it has to do with the 19th and 20th centuries of Anuhara, the fashion that I actually work on, which was sort of like brought around the world by uh, the global circulation of indentured South Asian sort of like labor. Uh, um, I do a lot of sort of like different things. I'm interested in sort of like modern architecture. I sort of like am involved in you know a journal it's called Southeast of Now, published by NUS Press. And occasionally I'm also a artist and sort of curate that. Uh, maybe the next one. Yeah, so you know, uh, just, it's just a sort of like you know, image board of the stuff I do. Sometimes I also make art apparently. Uh, I also provide expertise for practical application. Something about the institute itself. So we've been mainly carrying out advanced research in philosophy and sociology, as the very name suggests. However, there are also some uh, clusters of research focusing on cognitive sciences and communication. And apart from this, our institute is engaged in education, publishing and popularization of sciences. Our institute runs actually a number of journals, both philosophical oriented and social sciences oriented journals, as well as we, we have also a publishing house, which publishing every year several, I don't know, dozens of publications, probably not hundreds, dozens of publications. I'm, I'm talking about monographs, edited volumes, and so on and so forth, in different languages, not only in Polish. And this institute goes. National and ethnic minorities in Poland. Uh, my research projects, my main research projects so far were uh, about uh, student migration uh, from Poland to the United Kingdom. Uh, it was a case study of Polish uh, students at London universities. Uh, I also conducted a lot of research on migrant entrepreneurship in Poland, uh, which included case studies of uh, Ukrainian migrants, they are the uh, biggest group of migrants, of immigrants in Poland, but uh, uh, I also analyzed migrant entrepreneurship uh, or, uh, within Asian communities in Poland. So Vietnamese uh, immigrants, um, uh, Chinese immigrants, uh, Indian immigrants in Poland. And uh, my most recent research project is about uh, Turkish migrants uh, on the Polish labor market. Uh, For a few years now, I've been involved in the cooperation with uh, uh, European Union institutions, and I reported on them, uh, on, uh, to them on the situation of migrants, uh, especially in Poland. But it was in the context of discrimination and then labor exploitation. Uh, and within the last year, few years, I conducted two research projects on the labor exploitation of migrants. And, uh, well, as I say, my projects were by both Poland, but they were conducted in the European Union context. Because the um, National University, one in Hanoi and one in Ho Chi Minh City, which does which do not belong to the Ministry of Education yet, <laughs> only to National University. And other university um, uh, host by um, Ministry of uh, Education and Training. So that's why uh, our university of social sciences and humanities will to be like uh, one independent, somehow independently. Um, so that's why we record um, Sociology is like a, a faculty rather than department. The two Asian uh, financial crises, uh, respectively in 1997, 1998, and 2008, the, price, the rise of China with her soft power and the uh, recent growth and growing initiatives, all brought about rapid escalation of inter and inter regional migration and labor. The focus on logistics 
bring new conceptual and empirical questions for the study of migration and citizenship in and beyond Asia. The summer school aims to bring new perspective on these topics, or the summer school aims to build the capacity of people to write on this, or the summer school aims to enhance the research capacity of uh, participants, so that will define uh, yeah, what kind of participants come, how, what we do, whether we do seminars, or for instance, if we just want to bring perspectives, then can be practitioner in the field, as well as PhD student, as well as uh, not necessarily only academics. Yes. If we are trying to enhance the research skills, then we will focus on researchers. So if we have that general for the school, so not so much for the topic. I think the topic are perfectly fine, what you, mm -hmm. what you read now. Very good. Uh, but it's more uh, with this particular summer school. Are we just trying to broaden the vision or of people working in this field? whether they are researcher or practitioner or something else. Or we want to focus more on research skills, or I mean, this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A dialogue with people, many people working um, in um, labor migration field. But we're just scholars or students on this. I don't agree that we should um, make activists or those who work for NGOs in our meeting. If we are thinking about these European participants, we could, for instance, to announce a call at our institute. We have a doctoral school, for instance. Yes, there are some students, doctoral students who specialize in migration studies also. So that for them, as I remember from my other involvements, summer schools, doctoral schools. There is a process of recruitment of doctoral students who are encouraged to propose the PhD project. They can uh, present them, they can get some friendly criticism coming during some seminars or something like this. So it would contribute to their, for instance, uh, PhD projects. Yes, so this is a very tangible outcome coming from them. They get certain benefit of attending such type of meeting, which might be profiled also according to our lines of inquiry, what we are really interested in, right? But some of them maybe also they can contribute to the final publications and so on. You, you never know because you recruit openly these, these students. But this would be a, one possible aspect of this, right? Related, for instance, with maturation of PhD students who are specializing also in this sort of uh, field, say, migration studies, right? Or if, more specific, we can be more specific. This is just thinking aloud. This is one of the possible elements of this would be summer school. Ten days, this is a kind of lot of you know, days. And, and there, there is probably space and time to accommodate also these different aspects if we go along the lines, of course. We will discuss that two weeks or ten days is a very long time. So I think it's good to talk about series all the time. So how we organize that, I think it's the most important. Sure. And uh, because the outcome of first is a publication and some of these things, so I think the proposal for the a PhD or young scholars to write something and we can discuss as a part, as one of the part. And second, it's also very important uh, at the, the academic to have a discussion with an activist. So I think uh, it can be uh, the second part of the summer school. Uh, which one? And the second, the, the first one is we can have some discussion, discussion, and because we want to have a publication, and the second one is not all the time with the theory so discussion, but we can so we can also invite the, the people from the NGO or other unions, and then we have a, other, other kinds of discussion. Sure, sure. Yeah, so and, and we can gather uh, have some feedback from the reality. Sure. Yes. Presentation. This morning, I think it's a, a great uh, uh, presentation. Uh, but I'm thinking of uh, Vietnam at this uh, stage, uh, a little bit like uh, China in 1990s, uh, which is 
experience a lot of uh, foreign investment. And then uh, the, the people coming, then we would be a mix of, so we would be in the perspective in an interdisciplinary, uh, what the, participatory, and this would be what we would do. We are uh, researchers, but uh, in the afternoons we can have uh, each group, sometimes by themselves, for example, not documentary workers, uh, documentary makers, uh, artists, they, they share their projects, but sometimes they share with other groups, okay, with legal group or with uh, a citizenship or with uh, migrant uh, worker policy uh, and so on. So the, the thing is how do we uh, mix different groups so that we, we really uh, can have dialogue with uh, different people. So in that way, uh, 10 days is very short. <laughs> but uh, it, it could be enough. It could, could be enough. And also, we do want to introduce or invite new perspectives. Otherwise, this conventional discourse will repeat itself. Okay? But we also want to uh, encourage a new project uh, to enter our agenda or to, to our and so on. So, this, this uh, of course, are uh, challenging, but I think that... Interesting kind of capacity building across uh, different constituencies involved with issues of migration sure. in Asia. Yeah. Uh, and as Simon says, we uh, need to keep in perspective the, I guess, the kind of issues of subjectivity around sure. uh, migrants themselves. Uh, in some way which is easier. The thing we will build up for our project, but this is something that we could do, okay? Uh, uh, issues that re that's related to um, these uh, topics, and uh, we have also, um, right. But how we, uh, and how for uh, Holland and uh, Western Sydney, you have your links to NGO or artistic groups. We also want to do this out so that we have a lot to share. Also for the staff, okay, uh, Taiwan Experience Education you know, Program. We uh, uh, will welcome uh, student researchers to visit and stay for one month and we can uh, 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 offer them uh, 10,000. There's the work done. So they are very uh, interesting, independent institute. Uh, also a, a great staff, so Professor Lop um, and his team, he will introduce his team, uh, will present to you. And what I ask people to do is present, like make an advertisement for their organization, I suppose, to tell us about what they do, but also put in front of us some of the problems. The first one is uh, from uh, 2017 to 20. Um, 18, uh, we collaborate with the Ho Chi Minh City Youth Union. 
uh, we have the reason to become an independent prestigious uh, scientific research unit in the field of humanities and social science policies and so on. So we think that we carry the mission to um, focus on the contemporary uh, Vietnamese society. We can apply the scientific no uh, knowledge in solving that we want to collaborate with the international organization to have uh, more projects to uh, uh, integrate to the community. And uh, then we uh, not forget to uh, serve the community. We think this is an important uh, mission of our organization because uh, this is a non-profit and non-government organization. We want to contribute something besides the scientific community. We want to change the... the uh, um. Or we need legal resources uh, to help uh, uh, those uh, workers who uh, 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 help. Uh, and, uh, in that case, or in other case, what kind of acti activities uh, or service for you uh, will have some sensitive... Uh... Uh, Lego um, forgettings, like Lego ropes to support the uh, poor people in Botanese and being you. So it's also a way to connect our current ropes and the target people like worker in you to join. And I can give you the link, like if they have any not a question, but uh, maybe a comment. Uh, I see in Vietnam now many and many research and many many results of the research. But how to use the research for policy maker is we still get in that. Many many results of the research, but the policy maker don't read that, don't know that. So uh, when we conduct many workshop with a national level. The government also say they need that, they need that, but the information already in there, in there, in there. I mean, networking is very important. However, how to give the result of the research for policy maker is more and more important. Because we just do just the uh, starting points, how to help for the migrant, or how to help for the vulnerable group, but we could not replace the, the responsibility and of the government and also of the vulnerable. And I see some, somehow some of the research is very, very interesting and very, very meaningful. But not advocate for a policy maker. It means we still bias or we still somewhere. Not the real view of that. And not a it's like um, um, Google Maps or something. You click on these different services to find just near you a kindergarten or uh, uh, some recreation activities as well and, and so on. But what, what really uh, is another issue, and I think there's a series of disconnects, academics and not being heard by public. set of strategic areas of things that we prioritize for the migrant community. The differences, how do you sort of then sort of like come up with the differences between the sort of like the areas that you're looking at? And why these differences and why are there more attempts to sort of like break that and some such thing. Because presumably migrant workers are also people who aspire towards maybe urban and heritage sort of like question or questions of digital sort of like economy and also uh, opportunities that the middle class aspire to. So why is there this disparity between the sort of like two degrees that you look at? I don't think, uh, for example, migrant workers only want to fulfill, we only find fulfillment through, you know, those basic sort of like human you know, services, right? Uh, they are also they also see fulfillment through other kinds of like uh, life science relations or career opportunities. Uh, succeed and unsuccess what we do. When we work with Queen Yon and Comtu, and we mobilize the local authority to involve in our project. And in Queen Yon, we have many, we get very successful because the local authority is very their responsibility to support for the informal sector and support with the environment protection. They don't we don't support anymore, but the project continues to work there up to now. And in this, uh, we work at ASEAN with you. 
because we are international organization, we cannot go to community directly to look at the poor. We have to make you under support of UN step, UN United Nations Economic Social Commission for ASEAN and the Pacific, and we work in this in four years. This is one of my projects in Guyana and Gotham City. And the objective of this is how to reduce the cost. That's why we involve the government in our program and they see the uh, essential to have an initiative way to resources. That's why we know we get very success in our project up to now, but come to we get fair. I mean come to when we the yet um, I, I I'm just trying to get a better picture of waste collection or sanitization of the uh, cities in Vietnam. Uh, because in Malaysia, sanitization is actually, these are works that belong to municipal uh, government. So even after uh, the, because in Malaysia we have privatization, so uh, I think beginning from 1990s, waste collection has have been privatized. So you, we have private companies who hire people working as waste collectors and with trucks. Okay, that's how it works in Malaysia. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to ask is that, are you saying that the entire waste collection in Vietnam are co completely done by independent waste collectors? Or are there also formal who are, who are, who are hired by, um, I don't know, whether government or, or company as um, salaried workers who collect waste? 30 percent. Uh, huh? 30 was, is 30%. They have a helmet policy, right? At the beginning, people don't want to wear the helmet. But if they don't wear the helmet and they go on motorbike, the police will find them. The transportation, the, the traffic police will find them. And they have to wear the helmet. But until now, with this law, they have no environment police. Who will, who will find uh, the resource? Uh, from uh, the corporation can put to the local uh, NGO. So 2009, they do two research. The first research on uh, corporate, corporate giving. And they found that uh, when corporate giving they just give to a big uh, organization, many of the UNICEF, said she will with the local human foundation. Together, we can work more and solve the root cause of the social, economic, and environment issues. However, we know that uh, Vietnam is still now is still a charitable country. So, I I work at an NGO. So, I when I talk with my my friend, what do you work? So, I work at a, a non-government organization. He said, What you? Again, the book, the government? Yeah. It must, have been, it must be so much fun to make it. Like, oh, it looks so good.